Scrutinizing the Holy Bible means truth. First, let me start by saying this. This is not about bashing no preachers. Um, I put Gino Jennings' name in the title, but then I put pastors. And the reason why is because there are a lot of people, like I've, I've been seeing a lot of things, you know, that I uh, bypass. And when you are, have the spirit of God and you know the truth, you want everybody to know the truth, you know, that zeal or whatever. But since there is more, every time I turn on, there's something about jewelry, jewelry. Gino said this about jewelry, jewelry. So those, I thought that title would draw the people who's um, saying things about jewelry because they really believe that. And so that's why I put this name. It's not about bashing no preacher. It's not ba bashing. Uh, it's not about bashing him. I have nothing against the man. He uh, he's my brother in Christ. Suppose you know my brother in Christ. I love him with the love of God. You don't have to know anybody, but I've I've heard him teach. Okay, but I and, and look, I understand because there are certain things in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, where uh, if when it sits by itself and you don't study the whole word, it's going to seem like it's something else. And I know that. Um, we don't supposed to listen to every wind and doctrine. I understand that. And this is why this is not about me. I don't know everything. I know nothing. Only thing I know is what the word says. So I encourage everyone to get a something to write with and some paper. Please write down these scriptures. And then, because um, uh, you know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Uh, and I'm just going to uh, cut the words down. Study. To show thyself or prove unto God, not unto me, not unto uh, Crepo Dollar, not unto Pastor Gino Jennings. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So nobody needs permission to read God's word. But let me show you something as a sister. I want to show you. So um, in Galatians 3, it says this, and I'm going to go and um, do what I need to do. As far as for me, I'm nothing. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And I have, and I am filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm led to do this. And God gave me the words. This is not about me and my thoughts. This is what's in the word. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male or female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and do what I need to do. Um, get your pencil, your, your something to write with, and some paper, and um, and also as I'm looking for this, I I do have other videos about jewelry, and it's directed to pastors, but um, they don't make a big fuss, but they have a lot of things about Gino. Gene said this and this, so let me just go through. Okay, Genesis chapter 24, verse 22 through 24. Also, verses 29 through 30 in the same chapter, uh, verses 52, 53, 52 and 53, and then 67. I'm going to do it like that because I, we're, we're dividing the word, and I want you to see. And it came to pass at the, uh, as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of half a shickle weight and two braces for for her hands, which is, is talking about Rebecca, uh, Isaac's wife to be, of ten shekels weight of gold, and said, "Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee. Is there room in thy father's house for us to judge in?" And she said unto him, "I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah. I know that might be boring, but listen, what she bare unto Nahor." And so, when you divide the word, you have to go through these things to get the full understanding. And Re Rebecca had a brother and his name was Laban and Laban ran into the man unto the well and it came to pass when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands and when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister saying thus spake the man unto me that he came unto the man and behold he stood by the camels at the well and it came to pass that when Abraham's or a Abraham's servant heard their words he worshiped the Lord bowing himself to the earth so abraham knows about this jewelry jewelry started before um you know way back so and uh, especially his time and the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to rebecca 
Nobody rejected that. So just keep listening. That has a lot. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. Okay, and then this is the last verse of this one. And Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent, and took Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his death. And I just read this to prove that it is Rebecca, Isaac's wife, okay? So, now let's get to the nitty-gritty. <laughs> Exodus, Exodus chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. And I will give this people, this is God, saying this. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Okay, Exodus, um, oh, I'm sorry, 22. But every woman, God's telling him, every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourn in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons. And upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. And let me tell you something. All through what I'm going to read you, God's going to say this. Um, it's not just an exodus. It's a gift from God. As he made the mountains here of gold. Uh, there's uh, uh, stones. Um, it says Havilah through the land of Ethiopia. Uh, the, the four rivers that reaches out to Turkey, Ethiopia, Iraq, around that area, and India. Okay. Um, exodus chapter... Uh, let's see, I want to get this. It should be Exodus chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague. Um, okay, wait a minute. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, let's skip down to 2. Speak now in the ears of the people, and that every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. If God rejected it that he made it as he has jewels and rubies and diamonds in heaven crowns of gold that's what he will be giving you and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of egyptians moreover the man moses was very great in the land of egypt in the sight of pharaoh's servant and the sight of the people okay exodus 12 um, 35 and 36 and the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor, and that goes on. Exodus 33, 5, 6. Or I, um, okay, so I, 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 there's a chapter of 33, but I went down to, um, uh, four. Let's see, three, four, and five. I will not. I will go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people. And this is after they had the jewels and everything, and they went to the wilderness. Um, he's telling Moses, they're stiff-necked people. Um, I, lest I consume thee in the way. And when the people heard these evil, evil tidings, they mourned. And no man put on the ornaments, because what God give you, they had to go into, uh, they were stripped. And so... Um, to consecrate themselves before God for the because they use these jewels to do idols for the Lord has said unto Moses say unto the children of Israel ye are a stiff neck people I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee that I may know what to do unto thee that's the only time that they had to take it off because of that but and the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the mount or or okay so now afterwards uh exodus 35 4 and 6 and then verses 10 and 11 and this is how you study okay and moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of israel saying this is the thing which the lord commanded saying take ye from among you an offering unto the lord whosoever is of a willing heart let him bring it an offering of the lord Bring this to my offering, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. And it just goes on. So after he told them to strip them, um, apparently he forgave them. So they took it, you know. Okay, verse, um, let me see, I'm trying to see that. I got verse 10. Okay, verse 10 and 11. And every wise-hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord hath commanded. I commanded you to do this. 
the tabernacle to make his tabernacle the tent the coverings uh, the boards etc okay um we're going to isaiah chapter 3 verse 15 to 23 now this is a lot of uh the scriptures that a lot of people um have issues with okay what mean ye this is what god said what mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind their faces of the poor said the lord god of hosts he didn't like that these same people with these jewelry more well it's not because of the jewelry they had it on but that was a gift from god so he took moreover the lord said listen because the daughters of zion are haughty that means think they're better than everybody and walk with stretched forth necks like in pride and wanton eyes like you know batting of the eyes like maybe with men walking and missing as they go that means to twist you know as you go as i see a lot of girls do today and make a tinkling with their feet they were caught up in pride god didn't like that he said okay you're going to do that and i gave you the gift therefore because of your haughtiness the lord will smite thee with the crown of, of the head of the daughters of zion and the lord will discover their secret parts And in that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments. I'm going to take it away because of you, you don't deserve it. About their feet and their skull, uh, calls and their brown tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. Oh, they wore that too. The bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels. Oh, they wore nose rings. The changeable suits of apparel, apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. Okay, Ezekiel uh, chapter 16, verse 7 through th Now he took it again in Isaiah 3. He took it off of them because of their haughty, the, the thinking they're better than everybody, their pride. And he knew well, what they wore, they, they caught themselves up in pride. They're like, I got this and I got that and I'm beautiful with the ornaments. So since you have put your trust in your, the idols with your ornament, let me remove it. But he's gonna give it back to him, just keep holding on. The bud of the field and thou hast increased and wax great and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned and thine ear. This is, um. Ezekiel 16, uh, 7 to 8 through 13. Okay, now when I pass by thee, this is what God is saying. When I pass by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and enter into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. So I love you and I'm going to adore you, adorn you. Then wash I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee and I anointed thee with oil. Okay, I hope you follow me. This is verse 10, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 10. I clothe thee also. I, God said, clothe thee with broader work and shod thee with backer skin. And I girded thee about with fine linen. I put you on the best. And I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornament. And I put braces upon thy hands. And a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead. And earrings in thine ears. And a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver. And thy raiment was of fine linen. And silk and brought it work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper unto a kingdom. So with these jewels and everything, he calls it beautiful. Okay, uh, same chapter 16, verse 15, 17, and 39. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. That's what happened in Isaiah 3. Also, and play as the harlot. Thou hast also taken thy my uh, thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I have given thee, and made us to thyself images of men, and didst commit whoring with them, didst commit worship the idols with them. 
Okay, the last verse 39. And I'm um, skipping through down to where it says, They shall strip thee also of thy clothes, and shall take thy fair jewels, and leave thee naked and bare. But mind you, this is in Ezekiel. When God first told them to put the jewels on, that was in Genesis. So we went from Genesis to Exodus to Ezekiel. they still wearing it. So it's not about what happened in Moses' days. You know, this is not, this is afterwards. Okay, Hosea chapter 2, verse 8 through 9, and then verse 13 and 17. Okay, starting with 8. For she did not know so uh, that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared, prepared for Baal. So I gave it to her, but she used it to devil worshippers or to idols. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof. This is why... Um, you know, the, the children of, of Jacob was uh, forgiven, and then they sinned. And then they were forgiven, and then they sinned back and forth. So God would remove the jewel, put it back on, they put it back on, and then it's just back and forth. Okay, verse 13. And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, so wherein she burnt incense to them. And she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, which are... Um, demons of idol, idol worship and forgot me and forgot me said the lord this is for god god gave it to you and when he adorns you it's for him okay for i will take away the names of balaam out of her mouth and they shall no more be remembered by their name okay um Okay, let me see. Who's adorning? Okay, that is 17. Okay, so now we're going to, and I'm almost done. We're going to 1 Peter um, chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. Okay, starting at verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on a apparel. He was just saying to adorn yourself. Is not about your jewels. Just like they're saying, rend your heart and not your garments. Uh, as the Bible says, where in the olden days, um, uh, when you they do something bad or something sin, they will rip, rip their clothes apart, tear the clothes off. And that is to humble yourself and to put ashes on you and to repent. But it's instead, uh, as God, God said, like it was done things um, naturally, as Moses did things naturally, you know, the, the blood of the pigeons and everything, then it became spiritual when Jesus died and shed his blood. So it's spiritual. So this is what this is talking. Who's adorning? When you adorn yourself, let it not be that outward adorning or plaiting the hair. It's not saying don't wear it. But it says, um, in a wearing of gold and a putting of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. When you adorn yourself, Adorn, it's not about um, material things. Do it from the heart. As Jesus said, you look uh, clean on the outside, but you're dirty on the inside. First get the clean, the inside clean, and then the outside will be clean. It's spiritual. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, like jewels, that's material things, um, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. So when you have a meek and quiet spirit, that's an ornament, spiritual ornament. And it says, which is in the sight of God of great price. Okay. And let me see where I'm finding this, uh, where it says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Oh, okay. Now, this is how the Bible, uh, in First Peter, it says how men adorn themselves. I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting i will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up this could be uh yeah lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting in like manner also so that's how men adorn their women adorn themselves in modest apparel of course you don't want your breasts hanging out um some of these females 
where you know it's not holy like it used to be like when you go up there and you do praise and worship or whatever up in the front and then you sing choir and you say oh well today is just thursday or friday and then you wear your little tight pants and everything we're going up there for one reason when you when when you're above people in front of them it's for holiness so now they're coming up there and they look like 500 pounds of corn in the wrong end of the bag. Now everybody knows you're not needed. Why are you going? <laughs> we don't want to see the behind your rump. We don't want that to be focused like, well, it shouldn't be looking. No, that's how you appear. Just like God told um, Aaron and his two sons. There's certain, he said, I want your apparel to look like this. So these are apparels like the, the ephod. Uh, it was full of jewels. But... It was to recognize that, hey, this is a priest. There's a certain way they had to dress. There's nothing wrong with dressing my, uh, uh, modest. We don't want to see that. And, and, I, and I have an issue with that because it's like people are in their flesh. Like now you don't have any, uh, like God doesn't have a heart. God doesn't want you to respect him. If he says, you know, you don't have to do that. And it's, well, it's about your heart. Okay, so if you have the Holy Spirit, it will change you to you know because everybody can't receive that so let's do the right thing um <laughs> okay in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety what does sobriety mean sober temperance moderation adorned spiritually okay um but with it says, but uh, verse 10, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works that the one, let the woman, okay, it goes in, I didn't want to get into this one because I didn't, but it says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to observe authority over the man, but to be in silence. Um, first, um, this is um, Paul, not talking to the Hebrew women. Actually, Jesus taught the Hebrew women. And the men in the grass, everywhere he taught the, um, and he, you know, so he told Paul to teach to the Gentiles. So here he is in Corinth. He's teaching at Corinth, learning a new gospel, how they said. The women were just talking and, and doing all, you know, asking questions while he was teaching. And that's interrupting. So he says, let them learn at home. He, he wasn't, Paul wasn't trying to keep them from being, to being, learning that. He said, <laughs> you know how women are, they talk so much and were detailed. And so they were asking questions while Paul was teaching the men. They were sitting with the men as well. But he says, um, I allow, God didn't say uh, not to teach women. He said, I don't allow it because they're, they're interrupting me. So ask questions at home. Let me finish teaching the men, okay? I didn't want to get into that, but um, uh, he was just saying that the women learn in silence. Like when I'm teaching, just let them be quiet. Let me talk to you with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman. I don't allow it to teach uh, nor to observe authority over the man. But um, I don't know what they were trying to do. If they were trying to be like the man and, and, and take control, I don't know. But speaking the word of God, reading what's in the Bible is not taking authority over nobody. This is God's word. That's not authority over man. God encourages all of us to be witnesses. But anyway, that's, that's another story. Okay. Well, let me see if that concludes. Uh, okay. And let me add something about adorning. Uh, in Revelation 21, verse 2, it says, And I, John, saw, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. There is a temple, but this is not the temple that he, this, he's not talking about the temple right now. He's talking about the holy city, the holy city being bright, full of glory. So not jewelry. It's not jewelry. Uh, but the temple has jewels, like, you know, uh, the um, ugh, the foundations of the temple uh, will have, like, a ja a different uh, rubies and jasper and all that stuff. So I was just using that as, as an example, as adorning yourself, as we read in First Peter. It's not saying don't wear jewelry. It was just saying uh, uh, when it, the way it's worded, you know, how the translate is the same. Um, uh, let's see, not the model's pearl, but um um adorn yourselves 
um, not in, not as, and so, or whatever, I can't, you know, I already read it, um, uh, adorn, the plaiting of the hair. It's just saying, we're not talking about in that way, but adorn yourself spiritually. Um, so that's why I want to read, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay. Uh, spiritually. Um, okay. I'm ending this. Can I just say something real quick? Can I just read something? <laughs> I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse, verse 9 through uh, 16. Let me try to say this real quick. Okay. But, at, but as it is written, this is, now this is what a lot of people um, um, get this mixed up. But this is not the, the pinpoint. The rest of it is. I have, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Now, this was done and said in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit wasn't given then, so uh, the only person that had the gift was like prophets and things like that, or they have open vision. But let me just read that. The, the, it says, um, Nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that loved him, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit and that's a, a lot of preachers preach that but um but it's the highlight is the rest it says for the spirit okay so how how has he revealed it by his spirit through dreams through visions through prophecy through you know um open visions and whatever how you know but anyway it searches all things yea the deepest things of god for what man know what to think? Now, see, I'm reading this because of this. Because a lot of people are not going to understand what I, you, you know, there's spiritual people who do. You, you get your, 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 something to write down and some paper. But for those who are not spiritual, it says, and the reason why you don't understand, for what man know what the things of man? See, this is not me. This is the Bible. So I'm not speaking out of my head. No one know what the things of man say the spirit of man which is in him so if you're carnal or you're in your flesh then you're going to understand in your flesh even so the things of god know of no man but the spirit of god you have the spirit of god you will understand now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god you no know, i'm saying this because of me too because i want to let you know that I'm not saying I know everything, but God has um, uh, led me to do this. And everybody has a gift of God. You know, there's uh, different uh, gifts in all. So just receive the word. As Jesus said, if you don't believe me that I am the son of God, then believe the works. <laughs> okay, so we're all sisters and brothers in Christ for those who are born again. Okay, verse 13, which things also we speak not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So we should not have a problem right now. And um, so I'm saying this to avoid a lot of back and forth on my comments, because what's in this video is the answer that um, I believe that you'll be asking. So this is not uh, going against nobody. I already explained it from the beginning. But the natural man to receive it, not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can ye know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Let me say this again. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Why? Because if you're re living a righteous life, you know when the Bible says, judge not, that ye be not judged, a lot of people don't understand what that means. That only means that if you tell somebody something, just make sure you're not doing it. That's why it says, uh, uh, cast out the moat out of your eye. If you're doing it, then you'll see clearly to cast it out in somebody else's eye, right? Um, and that's why it says, um, because if you don't do that, if you tell somebody, uh, uh, as Paul said, uh, what's it, Peter or Paul? It says, um, if you commit, a, uh, thou who tell somebody not to commit adultery, does thou commit adultery? 
So you got to clean yourself or so we can't do that. So judging is not like you can't judge me. The, the Bible says the, 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 um, the saints shall judge the world. This is not about putting people in hell or heaven. That's the judgment day for God. But, um, and that's why this says, don't cast your pearls out to swine. Cause if you are doing something and you telling them not to do it, it's just, it's going to turn again and rend you means they're going to come back to you and say, you're doing it. So we just got to be careful. So when we help someone just say, Hey, I've been through that. I've done that. I have, uh, you know, I turned to God, this and that, or pray for them or, you know, or tell them, you know, it's not good to do that, but make sure you're not doing it because if you do it, then it makes you a judge. But, um, if you're not doing it and you tell somebody, um, then you can do that. And that's why it says, judge not that ye be, uh, you know how that goes. I'm getting tongue tied, but that means don't judge somebody and you're doing it because you're going to get judged and they're going to say you're doing it. All right. That concludes everything. Thank you for taking the time. And I hope you, um, um, was able to, um, follow me in scripture. So this is not about me. I just want to, and this, I do this out of the kindness of my heart, out of the love of people. And you know, we can't help it. Uh, this is what we were taught, uh, coming up. My church, when I was coming up, did not say that, uh, we can't, couldn't wear jewelry. You know, they understood, but, um, there's a lot of churches that, uh, of churches. And then we go by that and we see it as it is. And we don't go and study to find out. Cause I'm, I'm a very detailed person, uh, naturally and spiritually. And I ask God, okay. So why is it that uh, people say you can't wear jewelry? So why is it that you have you make gold? Why is it that you have gold and uh, uh, diamonds and rubies and all this stuff on on the earth? You said you made the earth for us, and then I said, what about heaven? You have a crown of of uh, gold, or you have I'm sure rubies. One girl said she had a um, a near death experience, and she uh, you know she had pearls, but God said she wasn't um, ready yet to, to, uh, go to heaven. Cause she still had to, uh, do some things. So, uh, she had, she saw pearls in her crown. So then I be, God began to give me the scriptures and he began to, um, uh, and that's why you have to study. And the, the answers is in that Bible. You don't have to, and be careful by going to the dictionary. Uh, when you Google these things, because, um, I remember some things that, that, that I newly saw that was in there that was in, 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 that was not in there years ago. They add, and there's a lot of people that's like on these quote things, they put what they feel in their heart. And there was one thing I read that was totally not in the Bible. And so that's why they said, well, I Googled it and it says this. And so they go by that. No, study the Bible. If you went to theological school and all this stuff, let me tell you, that King James Version Bible, I'm not saying... Um, I know a lot of things was taken from it, uh, like translation, but look, God knew that from the beginning, what, what we're going to have. So all the missing pieces, God will put in the, 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 fill in the puzzle by asking him, he'll, he'll give you the answers by dream vision, or he'll get, go to the old Testament and new Testament and et cetera. Okay. Thank you.